Hello my friends, it's me Karen Valentine. Welcome back to my channel. This page, oh my goodness. When I was on Etsy yesterday, I think, might have been the day before, but anyway, I was on Etsy and the little, the little bell for updates rang and this page popped up <laughs> and I just about had a heart attack. I love, love, love this page. This might be my most favorite Mariola page to date. So, because I was ready to do another color along, um, I, this was a no-brainer. So, this is what we're going to work on. Um, I printed the light version on my, on my um, Nina Desert Storm cardstock. And a link to that is down in the description box below. It's been really fun to see um, all over YouTube. Um, lots and lots more people um, are starting to use this paper. And, um, and I know why, because it's such an awesome paper. Um, so it's cool to start seeing it popping up all over the place. Okay, so um, I'm going to use luminance again because... I've just been really, really enjoying my luminous, Luminance pencils lately. Um, that being said, I have been for some time thinking about doing a color conversion um, chart for Luminance to Prismacolor or vice versa. Um, I did get one from... Um, of uh, Karen Hull from website Karen Hull. She has a full, complete, um, lots of different brands of pencils color chart on her website. Um, I wanted to um, to check it out and see what it was like. Um, but there are a lot of the pencils um, that I personally wouldn't don't like. For their comparisons so I am going to do my own um, and I will do it let's see if I have an example of what I'm going to do not that you know you need to see it until I do it but I did these color these um, color charts where I have a double box so I think when I do it I'll do the um, you know the Prismacolor in the first box and the and the comparative brand in the second box so that they can be right there side by side and um, make it a little bit easier for you guys. Um, if I use the luminance, if you don't have them and you want to use Prismacolor, um, then that will make things a little bit easier for you. So um, yeah, so with that being said, I will go ahead and get started. So um, I'm going to start with Burt Sienna, 50%. And let's go ahead and zoom in. She's so pretty. <laughs> and her hair is so pretty. And there's an owl on the page. I just, it's just like, it's everything I want in a coloring page. <laughs> so. I've been working on my doggy portraits um, these past few days and enjoying that so much. Never, never, ever, ever, ever would I have ever imagined that I could have done that. Um, and it wasn't until the, um, the premiere video that I did for Mariola May and the She-Wolf, when um, Christy Color and Sketch asked me if I did um, pet portraits, and I instantly said, um, no, <laughs> like, I cannot draw. And she made the comment that you don't have to draw, you just, she said, just do a rough sketch and then, you know, basically let your coloring, you know, instincts and skills take over. And you just do it that way. 
and it got me thinking like, okay, well, I'm going to give that a try. I'm kind of stuck right here where it's like, oh, where do I put the, okay, so, sorry for, okay, I got to do something here, just a sec. I'm going to draw this in because I wasn't sure if that was a big piece of hair or two, but it's one big piece of hair. Okay, that helps me see what to do. Anyway, so I just thought um, I, I'm i going to try. So I had seen um, a lot of artists use a grid method. So they take their, um, their reference photo and they lay a grid on top of it, whether that means that they have a printed photo and they draw the grid. Or in my case, I just used, um, I gotta figure out more where my light source is here. Hang on, sorry, I'll get to finishing the story in a minute. Um, okay, so she, I'm, I'm gonna say the light source is gonna come from over here. Um, so maybe I shouldn't have done that quite as dark as I did. Um, <laughs> I cannot talk and color at the same time. This is why I can't do any um, difficult, <laughs> difficult pages <laughs> during live streams because I just can't, I can't do it. Okay, back to the story. Um, anyway, so yes, a grid. In my case, I used a photo um, that I, I took and I actually put it into Photoshop um, and I laid the grid on top of the photo in Photoshop and then just had it on my iPad sized proportionately and then I did the same grid on my paper and then I just started doing a really rough sketch of the um, of the picture um, so rough that when I looked at it I went there's no way this is gonna look like you know my dog um, but I persevered <laughs> and um, to my utter amazement when I was finished it looked like Cooper that was the first one that I did and um, That gave me the confidence to try again. So I did a second one. I did Jasmine. She was my Pembroke Welsh Corgi. And she passed a couple of years ago. That was a hard, that was a hard one. But anyway, um, so I did her. And it looks just like her. And I, 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 I literally, I'm in shock. I'm still in shock. It's like, I just cannot believe it because I never, ever thought that I could draw. I still don't think I could draw. Um, but I'm not really drawing, you know? I'm doing this rough sketch and then I'm using my color pencils. And um, that's where my comfort zone is. And so it, it was really cool. I'm, I'm really very excited about the whole thing. So anyway, that's what I've been doing for the last few days. And um, if you want to see them, because they're already framed <laughs> and hanging in my room, if you want to see them, um, Cooper is posted on Instagram right now on Art by Karen Valentine. And Jasmine, I haven't posted her yet, um, but I will probably tomorrow. Probably by the time this video is is um, is up, she'll be on the page as well. So I decided to give her this little um, dimple on her chin, this little thingy. So I made it a little bit darker, right there. That's why I did that. <laughs> so if you um, if you are using Prismacolors, yeah, see, I hate to, I mean, this one is easy. If you're using Prismacolors, you'd be using Chestnut. Um, this 
I think I said this was burnt sienna 50%. Um, after I get this done, I'll start on the conversion chart so that um, by the time the whole page is uploaded, I'll have the conversion chart ready for you guys as well. So it's fun because you never know you never know what paths life is going to take you down and um, I have I have um, I don't know if reinventing myself is the right word but I have started um, new businesses and careers and I will call them careers because they have um, not only taken up my life <laughs> and time, um, but they've also been successful and made me money. Um, so I've started new businesses several times where I get to work for myself and um, so that's been very, very cool. And so I kind of am thinking to myself, well, heck, you know, now that I'm retired from the vintage business, it'd be nice if I could find a career, a job, <laughs> make a business out of something else, something that I love, but something that I can do, you know, from home. And coloring has always been one of those things. Well, always. <laughs> For the last few years, it's been one of those things that I've really, really loved. And it was like, how do you, you know, how do you make a career out of coloring? I don't know. Some people have managed to do that, but I haven't figured out a way to do that yet. But people always um, want portraits of their of their fur babies, because we love them like we love our kids. So, I don't want to get too ahead of myself. I've only done two, I've only done two so far. Um, but I figure maybe after I get five, if I can do five in a row, and they all look like they're supposed to look, um, then maybe I'll be ready to start putting myself out there a little bit and trying to do other people's. We'll see. It's pretty exciting though. I do find doing skin around tattoos a little challenging sometimes, just for me, but it's okay. Challenge is good. I do like coloring the light pages because I don't like dark lines on my pages, but sometimes <laughs> it's hard to tell what I'm doing. <laughs> I need to have the, the Etsy page pulled up where I can see her dark version too. That helps sometimes. These luminance pencils are so nice on this paper.
That's another thing I have to try and find is a good art paper that I like for the colored pencil portraits. You guys know I don't like toothy paper. Um, I haven't found any evidence of whether this paper is acid free or not. I, I, I'm thinking that it would be. I think most papers nowadays, they make acid free, but I don't know for sure. So it's hard to know what to use if and when I start doing portraits, um, dog portraits for clients. God, it just sounds so weird to even say it. Like it's so early yet for me to even be thinking about this, but I, I gotta think about it because I gotta find, I gotta find a paper that I'm gonna be able to use for that. Maybe I can use this one, I don't know, but I'm kind of limited in sizes. Um, it's pretty much just going to be, if they plan on framing it, if I do it on something like this, then they're, it's pretty much an 8 by 10 portrait and that's it. Which, you know, wouldn't be bad, I guess, to start. That's good. All right, do I want Dark Flesh 5 or Dark Flesh 40? Depends on how dark I want her skin tone to be. Um, that's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> Let's start. Oh, okay, let me just see. This is um, Dark Flesh 5. Which is probably plenty. Something about that shadow that I have there that I don't like, so I'm going to erase it. It makes her um, nose look unsymmetrical. So let's try that again. And come further out. And let's put a little bit of um, buff titanium. a touch. Not very much because the light is coming from over here. Okay, back to Dark Flesh 5%. Sorry, I know I do bounce around a bit, but that's how I work. <laughs> okay. I'm going to leave just a tiny little bit of um, light right along her jawline on this side for reflected light.
Let's do some buff titanium. Okay, what's next? I need to sharpen it. Ribbit, that's loud. So some of you may may have seen um, Shannon and her um, new pencil sharpener that she got off of um, my link here for um, during the Mario LeMay event. <laughs> um, and she got it, and it's it's a newer version than what I have. It, um, it basically feeds the pencil down by itself and then pops it back up to you. It was, it was really cool. Um, but for some reason, they changed the um, the whole uh, diameter, and her version won't take the bigger pencils like the whole beans or the um, maybe not even luminance. I don't. I don't know. She bought it for her Prismas, um, and she's really happy with it for Prismas. Thankfully. <laughs> But I was going to get it because I thought, oh, I'm, I'm ready for an upgrade. And it was fun. You know, it was pretty cool. It popped the pencil right back up out at him. But, um, but now I don't, I don't know. I don't think, I don't think I am because I like my version. And I have control of how, um, how sharp I want it to be just by how much, how long I hold it and press it down into the sharpener. So be aware, you guys, that if you, um, if you get the pencil sharpener off of the link that I posted, um, it is the newer version. So I may have to search for a, um, for a new sharpener that has the size hold that, that I need.
What do I want next? I want this side of her face to be a little bit darker, so I'm gonna use Dark Flesh 40% over on this side of her face just to deepen things up a little bit. of buff titanium up here just a tiny little bit on that side just to the top but not down here she has a weird line right there and I don't know if I did that or if that's in the paper did I do that I don't know Um, just because I want to, I'm just going to put some white in her um, eyes, <laughs> just because it helps me visualize the page a little bit better. Okay, let's do some color in her cheeks so we make sure that we get that in there, and then we'll start with some other stuff. Oh, all I need some cheek colors. Oh, by the way, if you're in the United States, so I heard a rumor, and I think I'd mentioned it, so hopefully I'm not spreading rumors that are not true. But I heard a rumor that um, um, Karen Dash was discontinuing the anthropology why no pink number 571 I I cannot confirm that I cannot find any confirmation that that is true um, but that's what I heard so out of um, panic <laughs> because I love this pink um, I tr was going to um, you know order a few online and I started searching around um, you know Dick Blick um, Jerry's Artorama, um, all these places. My, I have both a Dick Blick and a Jerry's Artorama in my town, um, as well as an Arizona Art Supply, and none of them carry in store. Um, no, I take that back. They carry them in store a couple. <laughs> What am I trying to say? Two of them carry them in stock in the store, but they were both out of stock of them in the store. Okay, so at that point, I'm like, okay, well, now what? If they're going to discontinue it, um, then I need to order some online. If they're not, then they'll show up later. But what if? So I um, started looking around, and I was very surprised. So this is the Anthro Pink 571. I was very surprised to discover um, that it was cheaper, quite a bit cheaper, for me to order from Jackson's Art Supply in England. Now, I'm in Arizona, USA, mind you. Um, cheaper for me to order from Jackson's Art Supply in England and have it shipped here than it was for me to order from Dick Blick or Jerry's Artorama. Now, if I had ordered enough, um, 
you know, to get the free shipping, I think it's like $60 worth of stuff. If I had ordered enough to get the free shipping, it would have been, you know, it would have been the same um, to order or close to the same. But I, I, I didn't need anything else. I just wanted seven luminance pencils. I wanted, you know, two of these and two of another color and two of another color and so on and so forth. So the shipping, Pyrrhaline Brown 585. The shipping from um, England was only $5. Um, the shipping here in the States was like eight or ten dollars to ship those seven pencils. Plus, I had to pay tax, which I didn't have to pay through Jackson's Art Supply in England. So, the moral of this story is. Check out Jackson's Art Supply if you're looking to order art supplies um, and you're not ordering enough to get the free shipping. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> okay, let's add some... Uh... Okay, so some of you guys are a little nervous. I hear about adding these odd colors, like um, the purples, the violets, the purples, the, you know, whether it's no matter what brand it is to the skin. And I totally get it. Um, when I first started doing portraits, it was like, what, purple? But the more I learned and tried it, the more I realized how important it is to get a realistic and interesting skin tone. So I totally get it if you are um, coloring in a coloring book and you're afraid to mess up your coloring book, I get it. However, it's just a piece of paper and a little bit of time. So if you're struggling to add more color to your portraits. If your portraits are feeling um, flat um, or dull, if, you, if, if you're not happy with them, I mean, if you're happy with them, then by all means, do what you're doing and, and be happy and that's cool. Um, but if you're doing them and at the end you're like, this is, I'm not happy with it, this is not what I want, I'm going to say to you, try experimenting. Try adding some of these different colors into your skin tones and more depth, darker. Go darker around the, around the outside of the, of the face, um, in the shadows, that sort of stuff. Because the, the, the highs and lows, the darks and lights, are what make the faces look more three-dimensional and more real. That's just, just my thought, just my take on doing the portraits, but you'll never continue to grow and get better unless you start playing and experimenting with your colors. Again, it's just a piece of paper. If it messes up, if you do the skin tone first, that's why I started, when I started with portraits, and, and still to this day, it kind of has turned into a habit, but if you um, do the skin first. So if you mess it up, you know, it's not a big deal. It's not a huge investment of your time. You don't have to look at the page and go, oh my God, I did all that work and then I messed it up. You're just playing. And don't forget that you can um, print on the opposite side of the page. So um, if you're worried about, you know, like the cost of the paper or whatever, especially if you're, um, you know, working on um, a toned paper, um, 
print on the other side. You know, your, your printer should be able to take the, the amount of color pencil that you, you know, put on one side and then are not happy. Just print it again. Use the other side. I find on this paper, the it colors virtually the same on both sides of the page. So I don't, I don't concern myself with which, um, which side I'm using because it's pretty much the same. Your purples, um, your purple colors, those go mostly in the areas that are shaded because they're cool. And so you're not going to put purple in the middle of the face. You're only going to put it in the shadows and the parts that you want dark. I feel like I want to add a little bit more of this to the shadow that her nose would cast. bit of the um either white or buff titanium to the nose right here okay let's get this shadow a little bit darker but not too crazy dark let's cover that with a little bit of Burnt sienna, ten percent. Okay, back a little bit more darker here. Okay, let's put this. I want to bring her cheek color over just a hair with the anthro pink. All right, let's do I don't know, we need, I need something looks dull over here. How did I get warmth in her face, but not in her? I don't know how I did, I don't know how I did that. Um, must have been the pink. This is burnt ochre 50%, but I'm not sure that I want to use it. Yes, I am. Burnt ochre 50%. Warmed things up nicely.
Oh, and there is also now a link to this paper, to a smaller pack, to a 25 pack, um, rather than a 250 pack. So you can try it. However, that being said, you're gonna pay a lot more per sheet when you buy it that way. Um, so if you're really unsure, then try the 25 pack. But if you think you might really like it, like so many of us do, um, then just go for the big pack because it's really cheaper. Fading between brown ochre 10% and light flush. Let's try the brown ochre. I kind of think that's plenty of gold, golden tone, so. I need to get a little bit of pink on her nose. ribbon or something so that might need a little bit of the burnt ochre ten percent I think I missed Put a little bit of the pink on her nose. Because as I learned, you've got pink tones in the cheek and nose area, yellow tones in the forehead, and grayer, blue, um, bluer, purpley tones in the in the lower third generally on a face so I've been kind of trying to um, this is back to burnt ochre 10% I've been kind of trying to experiment with that and play around with that information and seems to be pretty good information her her nose on this side is still looking weird to me so I'm gonna I'm gonna get a better shadow or something going on over here. Just define that a little bit more because it was just not looking right. And it's 
it's all my fault because I, I didn't, I colored something I shouldn't have colored, I think. Back. I don't know why I'm struggling to, to keep this line here for some reason. So again, I'm using the um, violet brown. That looks better. Let's add a little bit more of that under here. Okay, what do I want? Let's go to dark flesh. I love this color. This is one of my favorite colors in the new colors from Luminance. And if you guys only want if you, if, if you want to try luminance, but you don't have them, but you really only want to use them for skin, um, shoot me a message or a, um, you know, leave a comment or um, shoot me a private message on Instagram or Facebook, and I will give you the colors that I would recommend that you get. Um, this is Burnt Sienna 50%, that I would recommend that you get to do portraits with. The um, portrait set, the new one that has the new colors in it is great. And I would, I would say get that. Um, but then there's also some colors that are not in that portrait set that I think you need. Um, so you can just order those open stock and and order them from Jackson's Art Supply because they'll be cheaper. Want to use a really light touch when you're using these dark colors because they do 
go down quite dark. And if you're pushing too hard, you'll get heavy lines, which you'll have to try and blend out then, and that sucks. <laughs> she needs still some more warmth on her body so I'm going to use this burnt ochre 50% just a little bit more I really can't figure out what I did that would make her so I don't know kind of flat down here it must be the pinks maybe I'll put some pink in her in her body That's better. Um, yeah, let's just put a little bit of pink in her skin down here. I think that's why I like this pink so much is that if you use it really, really lightly you don't, it doesn't look like she's got, you know, blush on her skin. It just, it just adds this really beautiful tone to her skin that I really like. Much better. I might have to come in with some more colors and color around these tattoos after I get the tattoos done because I feel like I'm missing bits here. All right, let us do some blending with my blender. You don't have to press down super hard to get this to work. And if you don't press too hard, then you still um, will preserve that tooth so that if you want to add more color afterwards, you still can. Like I'm gonna add some more highlight to her face, some more some white or buff titanium, I think. I'm also wondering if I need to add a little bit more dark in her eye area. Just add some more dark around her eyes.
else I want to do real quick is take some white or of titanium, put that in the corners, get her a little bit of lightness there. Sometimes it's hard to, to get that continual look when you've got something in the middle of the face. At least it is for me. It's like it distracts me or it, it keep, I don't know. It, it can be a little bit difficult. All right, I still think that her nose is not right, that there would be more shading on the um, side of her nose from from the ball. So I'm gonna darken that a little bit more. That's, that's better. Okay, let's blend that. thinking. <laughs> um, let's do her lips and then I will, when I get to this point, I always feel like I need to do the eyes and the lips and then I can come back if I need to add more to the skin. I feel like the skin needs something, but I don't know what that is yet. So um, buff titanium or should I do white? to do right. <laughs> right down the center of her lip, kind of the center, where it, where it would be the, the puffiest. <laughs> and then a little bit up top. I'm going to add a little bit more highlight at the top of this lip. And then just a little bit, really lightly, right there. Okay, now, I can either use the Anthro Pink, or I can use, oh, I pulled it out already? Yes, I pulled this. No, that's not it. Where is it? Where is it? It is called, oh, I didn't pull it out. Okay, so this is also one of the new colors. This, oh, good grief. Never mind. I don't know where it is. It's not where it's supposed to be. All right, let me pull out a couple of other colors here. What do we want? I like that crimson aubergine. Let's pull that. Or, no, that's too dark. Pearling brown is a nice color too. I have that out already though. Okay, um, I need to find a pencil. Maybe it's right in front of my face, dark flesh. Dark flesh. Nope, that's not it. That's not it. Oh, that's very distressing. Oh, it's right. <laughs> it's right in my hand. Okay. <laughs> that's not embarrassing. 
All right, so Herculaneum Red 068 is the new one of the new colors. And um, when I use Prismas, a lot of the time I like to use the Nectar as the base color on the lip. So for me, this is the, um, the Luminance version of, of Nectar. I'm not saying that it's the, the same color. Um, like on a color chart, but this is what I would use instead of nectar. Do some of this crimson aubergine because it's such a pretty color. And I'm looking for, as usual, stuff everywhere. Okay, blender. All of my um, Karen Dash blender pencils, except for the new ones that I have in package, are all getting a little small. Okay, so just going down with my lines. They're going to be darker where the two lips meet. And feather that color down into the lip. I'm going to put some down here, but I want this line that's down here to be really soft. I don't want it to be a, a harsh line. I just want it to have a little bit of this color down here as well. We're going to do this side of the lip darker than this side of the lip. Did I get that shaped right? You can really change the whole look of a face by <laughs> changing the shape of the lip. And I don't want to do that because I love the way her face looks. So. Let's do the top. try to go pretty slow on lips because again you can change things too much if you go too too fast
And I kind of stop and sit back for a minute, you know, for a minute, for a second, you know, kind of, I think you can probably tell that I'm like pulling away. That's because it's, <laughs> it's because I'm, when I'm working, I'm way down low, close to the page, because I can see better that way without my glasses. And then I just kind of pull away for a second and check it. All right. So when I when I blend. I'm going to do it in the direction that the lip lines would be. And now I'm going to take, I'm curious what dark flesh would be like instead of black. might not be dark enough. It might be good for deepening the um, shadow over here, but not for get, getting us that, that line. So let me pull out black. It's going to go right in the middle. And a teeny bit thicker right here because that's kind of like where her mouth is a little teeny bit, not really open, but with a little bit of shading in there. Debating if that was too much, even. So, this is back to the crimson aubergine, and I'll put a little bit of that on top of the black. Just a little bit more white right there. But can you see how, um, like I didn't put the crimson aubergine all over the whole lip. So the crimson aubergine is on this side of her face where the color is, you know, where her she would be kind of a little bit darker in the shadow. We didn't put much right there in the center and we didn't put put any or much right up here. So I feel like it helped to make her lips look um, more rounded and, and three-dimensional. I want a little bit more shading in her, um, underneath her lip though. So I think I will start um, with the burnt sienna, but maybe not. Let's do a little bit of violet gray. Sometimes it takes a few different colors to get it the way I want it. And this is dark flesh. still almost feel like I want her, this side of her face to be even darker. 
don't I don't know why. Something about the way I did that, um, her little chin dimple is not right. So this is buff titanium. And then maybe dark flesh 5%. Dark flesh 5%. little bit. And I'm not sure if there would be a even more of a highlight up above it. I guess there would be. Let's do a little bit more over here. And a little bit more over here. And a little bit more up here. All right, let's do the eyes. I'm going to use, um, start with the Herculaneum Red. Yeah, Herculaneum Red. The corners. And then we want, about French gray, do I have a cool gray too? Let's do um, French gray, 10%. But I also want a little bit of this Payne's gray. <laughs> Think. Is that what I want? No, it's too blue. That's too blue. I need a. Hmm. Okay, let's. What is this? Slate? Uh, yeah, let's try slate. Slate gray. Just want it to be a little bit grayer. And then I can use my um, white.
So then I kind of have to think about, do I want her to, what color hair do I want? That might help determine what color eyes I want her to have. Um, and I think I'm going to use Pablo's. So we stick with the Karen Dash brand and do Luminance and Pablo's on this page. I haven't done a page with Pablo's yet, so that'll be interesting. Um, but I'm kind of, oh, I don't know. You know, I think I'm going to do brown eyes um, and, a, and a dark blonde. I mean, if I do brown eyes, no matter what color I pick, it will work, I think. So, um, let's do brown eyes. So I'm going to pull out sepia. And I actually think I might use the dark flesh. And then we need something light like this brown ochre 10%. Right, let's try this. So brown ochre 10%. I'm going to put down first. Just in some little lines. I don't even know if it'll work, but I'm going to try. And do some little lines. Maybe a little bit more at the bottom. Little dot, dot, dots. Okay, then the dark flesh. I'm going to kind of ignore the highlights that she's got in here, and we'll just add our own in at the end. That way I'm not worrying about it. Okay, so I'm just going real lightly. Go a little bit darker up at the top of the eye. And then sepia. Sepia I'm going to put around the outer edge. And let's see, do we want to come off of the black a little bit darker? Go even darker up top. Herculaneum red, right there on the waterline. Okay, let's put the pupil in. of one 
and um, I want some anthro pink. Just a hint of the pink on the whites of her eyes. And we can use some. Mm, let's use the Pureline Brown. That's what I have it out. Any of the dark reds will work. So really lightly, just a tiny little bit right at the dividing line of the... And then sometimes there's a second little red line there, which is interesting to me. But it is. All right, let's... I'm gonna still give her um, dark lashes and um, eyeliner, so we'll use the black. Um, it looks kind of weird because this hair is covering a part of the eye, so I'm I almost want to draw that hairline in right there, right there, because it's, it's bugging me. Just okay. So I think that's what would happen right there. So we need to get some gray under the lash line, which would be the shadow. Um, so I'm gonna try this French gray, because I really don't want it to be too dark. But I almost feel like that's not dark enough. So I'm used to my prismas at this point where I have a thousand different grays to choose from. And, you know, maybe I just grab a prisma gray because that is what I would do in real life. So um, if you're just using luminance and you don't have prismas or you don't want to use prismas, you just pick whatever gray you want to use. But for me, Prisma just has the best grays. So this is 50%. And it's just enough to give me that shadow that her lash, her upper lids would, would cause. And maybe even darken again the iris with some. Oh, yeah, that looks better. Okay. Um, let's do eyelashes. So, eyelashes again. I talked about this before. They don't go straight, they don't look like this. They're curved and they're going to be smaller at the um, corner of the eye. And at some point you have to change the direction of that um, of that curve. I feel like I'm not doing this very well because that hair is throwing me off. Right, 
I'm going to use Dark Flesh to thicken the lash line. And then I'm going to use Dark Flesh underneath. might change that to black but we'll have to see and then Yep, I want to darken that a little bit more. But I'm going to do it kind of with dots instead of a straight line. Okay, let's get her little her little white dot that makes her eyes come alive. Let's get that in there. Because right now they still look kind of dead. <laughs> Once we add the sparkle, instantly they come alive. I just think that's so cool. Okay. You can use a, a um, luminance white. But I'm going to use my prism white. I'm just going to put a little extra little um, shine over the surface of the, of the um, eyeball. All right. I think, I think, let's see, I want to put a little bit of white. Should we use, sometimes I would use my white paint for this because the Posca sometimes is a little bit too bright. I'm just going to do a dot of white in her, um, in the wet parts, you know, the, and then I'm going to do a little bit right there. Okay, am I happy with that? Is that... I think so. Oh, you know what she needs? She needs nostrils. I knew there was something that looked, something wasn't right. Let's give her some. It's funny how just one little tiny detail makes a huge difference. It's like, oh yeah, there we go. Let me zoom out a little bit here. Okay, I think she's done. Now, you guys know how I am. I tend to keep fiddling and fussing around. Like, I still want this to be darker. I think for the most part, her skin is done. I might come in here. I am. I'm going to come in here and just add a little bit more of this dark flesh at the very top of her hairline. Not hairline, her forehead. Very top of her forehead, right along the hairline. And I completely did not do her ear. <laughs> like, 
So what else is new? right but it'll be good enough by the time we get the um, hair all done and I think it'll look better I want to work on that chin dimple a little bit but I don't know what it needs I don't want to go too crazy with it um, I don't want to get too dark and then be like oh my god what did I just do <laughs> This is dark flush 40%. I just want to, on the top of it, a little bit. There we go. That's better. All right, so there's, there's her skin. I think I'm happy with that. Um, if there's anything else that I want to do to it, I suppose we'll probably do it when we when we do the tattoo part, as I sit here and continue to fuss and fiddle. Because that's what I do. <laughs> but all in all, I'm really happy with it. I mean, Mariola gave us such a gorgeous, gorgeous face to start with that I, how could you not like it? <laughs> all right, my friends, skin is done. We will come back and do um, hair next time and then um, I think we'll be able to finish it up um, doing the tattoos in one more video so yay all right that is all um, thank you so much for hanging out with me I really appreciate um, all your support leave a comment for me say hello tell me if you like this video um, tell me anything you want to tell me because your comments really really make a difference in um, in the in the video showing up and all of that good stuff so that is all until you i see you guys again take care of yourselves take care of each other happy coloring bye